dynamic keyword insertion, if you insist. Dynamic keyword insertion means Google gives you the ability to have an ad group with lots and lots of keywords, and whichever one gets triggered by a search, that keyword appears in your ad. It's like a merge field, like if you were to do dear so-and-so in an email or in Word, you know, uh, like when you get those letters, you know, from Publishers Clearinghouse, dear Howie, you've just won this, Howie, you've got to take advantage of that. Yours may not say Howie, but mine does. So here's how you do it and why you probably shouldn't. So the DKI, the Dynamic Keyword Insertion Format, is left squiggly bracket, the word keyword, colon, no space after the colon, and then the default keyword, and then close squiggly bracket. And you type the word keyword exactly, but you don't have the word default. Default becomes the keyword that would appear if none of the keywords that they chose fit. So let me show you what I mean. So here's a line, a description line, get keyword colon yummy toothpaste here. So this is a description line, which we know has 35 characters available. So when I count this out using a, um, a fixed width font, like uh, what is this, Courier New, I can see that the word get and a space after it is four characters. And then after whatever the keyword is, the space and then here is additional five characters for a total of nine. So 35 characters available, nine used. That means 26 characters are left for whatever that keyword is and it will fit. So if the triggered keyword in my list is 26 characters or fewer, that's what appears. If the triggered keyword is 27 characters or more, then that default text appears. So you can see in this case, the default text is two words, yummy toothpaste. So my advice is don't include keywords longer than the number of spaces available. If you do, um, then the default appears. For example, if one of your keywords is wintergreen toothpaste, we can see that wintergreen toothpaste, including the space, has 22 characters. So in the ad, your line with the dynamic keyword insertion, get keyword here, would appear get wintergreen toothpaste here. And wintergreen toothpaste would be bolded because the keyword always appears bolded in the ad. However, if you also included in that same ad group the keyword maraschino cherry toothpaste, well, that's 28 characters. So in that case, if someone typed in a search term that triggered that keyword, you would see get yummy toothpaste here. And the word yummy would not be bold, but the word toothpaste would. So there's three different capitalization formats that are useful to know. The first one is the K and the W are both lowercase, and so the word itself will appear in lowercase, whatever keyword gets triggered. Second one, the K in keyword is triggered, and so the first word, if it's a multiple word phrase, the first word gets triggered here, so it would be yummy, but not toothpaste. And the third capitalization format has the K and the W bolded, which means every single word in the keyword phrase that gets triggered gets capitalized. So when should you use dynamic keyword insertion? When all the keywords in an ad group are the same type, and I'll explain that in a moment. When all the keywords would make equal sense in an ad. So here's an example, uh, college sportswear, where you can see all these keywords are below 35 characters. Oklahoma, Alabama, Notre Dame, etc. all football jerseys, all less than 35 characters. So if we had that keyword alone in a description line, all of these would work. So there's your ad at the top with the dynamic keyword insertion there in the first description line. If someone does a search that triggers your keyword Princeton football jerseys, then that's what your ad will look like at the bottom. The first description line will have in bold, all first words, first letters capitalized, Princeton football jerseys. The rest of the ad will be the same. So when shouldn't you use dynamic keyword insertion? Well, when the keywords aren't all of the same semantic structure, it just won't look good. For example, the keyword wintergreen toothpaste 
get wintergreen toothpaste here, that looks good. But suppose in, you, in the same ad group, you have the keyword buy wintergreen toothpaste. In that case, the line would look like this, get buy wintergreen toothpaste here. That just looks silly. When you don't have hyper-relevant landing pages for each keyword. So dynamic keyword insertion gives you the ability to create ads that appear relevant like you made them up just for that search. But we know that's not true in the same way we know that uh, Publishers Clearinghouse didn't write me specially, but they just inserted my name into a form letter. So if you're inserting a keyword into a form ad and you're taking people to a generic landing page, so if the landing page was for that last one was college football jerseys and then you had to go and choose your team again, people would say, well, Jay, wait a minute, I just typed in Princeton. Why don't you take me to the Princeton page? So the best way to do that, to create hyper-relevant landing pages for each keyword, is to change the destination URL for each keyword in your ad group. So you can do that right here. If you look at the top one, red widget, and then you go to the right, you see a little pencil mark next to destination URL. And you click on the pencil and that opens up to an editor where you can then put in a special landing page for red widgets. And I would do the same for blue, green, purple, and all of the keywords in a DKI, in a dynamic keyword insertion ad group.